Hello everyone. My name is Gökçe and I'm joining from Istanbul. Today I'm going to talk about microparticle production and characterization for transcatheter arterial chemoembolization applications. Uh, chemoembolization is a procedure that is used to uh, treat cancerous tumors. Usually polymer beads and polymeric particles are used for embolization, but in our study, we used magnetic and clay minerals to produce chemoembolization particles. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, our study. First of all, I'm going to explain what is transcatheter arterial chemoembolization. If you know this, please bear with me. I'm going to keep it short. Later on, I will uh, explain the clinically used chemoembolization particles and uh, their disadvantages. After, I will explain why magnetic and clay mineral particles can be a solution and what they will bring to the table. Um, furthermore, I will explain our uh, particle production steps and uh, finally, I will uh, show you the results of this study. Transcatheter arterial chemoembolization is a procedure that uh, cuts off uh, tumor blood supply and administers uh, chemotherapy dr drugs at the same time. Via, via catheters, the particles are delivered to the tumor site. The ischemia and the uh, chemotherapy drug work simultaneously, and this results in shrinkage of the tumor and or necrosis. The size of the embolic agents, the particles, should be greater than 20 micrometers. Also, in this procedure, imaging plays a crucial role because uh, the radiologist that is uh, doing the procedure must see the particles and uh, must see where the particles are going. So, uh, the ability to be imaged under X-ray or CT uh, is very important. Chemoembolization is a currently performed, uh, clinically per performed uh, treatment for certain types of cancerous tumors, such as li liver and kidney tumors. But the particles that are mostly used are polymer beads mixed with uh, contrast media. There are several disadvantages to these particles. For example, the contrast media and the beads can be separated while administering them. This can mislead the radiologists uh, during the pr pr procedure. There's also some burst release response of these particles. Some release their drug within 30 minutes or so. Also some uh, hydrogels and uh, some po polymeric beads can be compacted while administering them. To overcome these disadvantages, different types of uh, multifunctional particles or uh, particles with improved drug loading and releasing uh, properties can be used and produced. And this would drastically improve the outcome of the treatment. As I mentioned before, we produced two different types of uh, chemoembolization particles. One is produced using magnetic nanoparticles and the other one using clay particles. What are the advantages of magnetic particles? Magnetic particles can be heated under alternating magnetic fields, which can induce uh, magnetic hyperthermia at the tumor site, which is a known fact that in increasing the temperature in the tumor site increases the efficacy of the tumor drug and also uh, higher temperatures dam damage the tumor tissue itself. What are the advantages of clay-based particles? Specifically, we use Montmorillonite, which I cannot even pronounce correctly, so I'm going to use the uh, common name, bentonite. Uh, we use bentonite, but most clay mineral particles are used in pharmaceutical and cosmetic formulations. They are non-toxic makeup and uh, high uh, adsorption capacity. 
and swelling capacity make them a good ca candidate for using in chemoembolization applications. They have a significantly extended drug release response. After the advantages of these particles, I'm going to talk about their, uh, the production steps we took. Uh, first, I'm going to explain our magnetic particles. Here, we can see the illustration of the par particles uh, structure we produced. First, we connected the iron oxide particles via bridging flocculation. Later, we coated the surf whole surface with another polymer. And lastly, the uh, doxorubicin, which is an anti-tumor drug, was loaded onto the surface. If we move on to the clay uh, mineral particles, we loaded bentonite with uh, doxorubicin and contrast media via adsorption method. After we produced the particles, we uh, obtained drug loading uh, efficiency and the release behavior of each particle. And finally, we tested these particles in vitro and in vivo. First of all, I'm going to explain the results of magnetic particles. In order to cre create this uh, inner core structure, which is uh, linked to each other, the iron oxides are linked to each other, we used uh, bridging fl flocculation. Uh, for this, we used uh, polyvinyl prodilon. At this concentration interval, uh, we observed that according to the potential values of different concentrations, we observed that at this range, bridging flocculation occurs. So we picked that concentration. And later on, the uh, outer polymer layer was chosen as hydroxyethylene cellulose. We also uh, tested at different concentrations. Here, uh, the average particle size of the final structures uh, are given in this graph. And we can see that as hydroxyethylene cellulose uh, concentration increases, the particle size also increases. Uh, we chose the five uh, gram per liter, co liter concentration because the most suitable size for uh, chemoembolization was this one. Uh, it was about approximately 71 micrometers. And then after we loaded uh, doxorubicin onto the uh, surface of the particles. Here we can see that the doxorubicin loading amount, loading efficiency is not that much. It's approximately about 35%. Uh, but uh, later in in vitro uh, assays, we, we, we saw that it was sufficient enough, so it was enough for us. When we look at the drug release uh, graph here, uh, we can see that uh, approximately uh, more than 80% of the uh, loaded drug was released within 12 hours at pH uh, at pH 6.8, which is tumor pH. After drug release, we tested our particles uh, for magnetic uh, hyperthermia applications. We applied alternate, alternating magnetic fields to our particles, and we, uh, we saw that our particles reached uh, from 18 degrees to uh, 55 degrees Celsius within uh, 110 seconds, which indicated that our particles are suitable for magnetic hyperthermia applications. And finally, we tested our magnetic particles in vitro and in vivo here. In vitro results against MCF7, which is a uh, human breast cancer cell line, showed that uh, our particles, which are uh, represented with gray bars and pure dogs represented with orange bars, indicate that at higher concentrations, our particles perform similarly to pure dogs, but as the con concentration decreased, our particles toxicity to cancer cells reduced significantly. So this indicates that the higher concentration is much more suitable for uh, such applications. Finally, the uh, embolization protocol uh, was carried out. Uh, here we can see the uh, kidney model 
uh, has sufficient blood flow. But uh, after administering our part in, uh, magnetic particles, we can see that the blood supply is uh, blocked to the uh, kidney, to the tumor, and uh, embolization was achieved with our particles. Uh, it, when we move on to the clay-based particles, here in this image is our final product. Uh, this has uh, doxorubicin and uh, co contrast media loaded onto them. We can see that as we loaded dox, the uh, particle size increased, but uh, when we loaded contrast media, which is represented by you here, uh, it, the particle average particle size reaches to 21 micrometers approximately. Uh, 21 micrometers, which is uh, suitable for transcatheter arterial chemoembolization applications. When we tested our particles' drug release behavior, we saw that about 55% uh, of the drug was released within 20 days, which is an extremely long time. The drug loading capacity was very high for these clay particles. Uh, they loaded up to almost 100% of the drug onto their surfaces and uh, between their layers. After, when we uh, tested them in mitro, ag again in uh, human breast cancer cell lines, we saw that at all concentrations, uh, our particles performed similarly to pure dox. And finally, we tested the clay mineral particles in vivo. Here again, we can see that uh, the blood supply to the kidney was blocked. And in clay mineral particles, we had contrast media loaded onto the particles, as if you can remember. And uh, we can see the particles are inside the uh, kidney here in the computed tomography imaging. In conclusion, both particles were able to embolize the uh, tumor model, and uh, they both uh, were able to load drug onto their surfaces, but the clay uh, particles were uh, much more successful in loading uh, the, drug, the chemotherapy drug. And drug release behavior of both particles differed uh, significantly. Clay mineral particles had a very extended release behavior, but uh, magnetic particles released all the drug loaded within 24 hours. Both particles reduced the cancer cell viability, but uh, magnetic particles were only eff effective at high, the highest concentration. And finally, hyperthermia was only achieved for magnetic particles, of course. Each particle was successful in its own way. Depending on the desired outcome, both particles could be used in chemoembolization applications. Of course, further uh, studies are required, but uh, both particles have the potential to be uh, embolization particles. If you have any questions, you can mail me in this address and I will try to answer any questions. Thank you for listening to me. I wish we could have met uh, face to face, but under these circumstances, it's uh, not possible. So have a nice day. Thank you again. Goodbye.